In order for us to understand about basic alignment, we need to understand some fundamentals. And the fundamentals of basic alignment is the spinal cord, we call it the middle line or the invisible line. Everything in this universe has a center. The center of her body between the shoulders is the solar plex. The solar plex is the center of her shoulders and her nipples means the wings of her emotional body. And the center of her cheeks is called the nasal bone. The nasal bone is the center of her intelligence. And the pelvis and the hips, the hips are the wings of her sexual energy. So the hip bones are the wings of the sexual energy. When we understand alignment, we always guide ourselves on this center on the front of the body. Now, if we turn around the spinal cord, can you turn around, Lina? Thank you. Now, the shoulders are directly connected with the cervical seven, and the hips are directly connected with the lumbar area, and the heart chakra is directly connected with the solar plex or the thoracic area. Can you turn around again? Thank you so much. Now here, when we talk about the center of the body, we are talking about a physical object called the human body. But we can do exactly the same thing with the physical mat. Okay. The center of the mat between the right and the left is called the middle line. This middle line is directly connected with the spinal cord or the center of the body. This is going to be our guideline to learn how to really use the mat when we are practicing yoga. Maintaining this center line is essential to understand how to maintain proper balance in your yoga practice. In the mat, we have what is called the first line. You can say here, it says first line. And then next to the first line, on next to the middle line, we have what is called the two parallel lines in the front for the standing poses. And then right here on the center, we have what is called the middle line. Then from the first line, we have something called the second line. We use the second line to do arm balancing poses like Bakasana, Majurasana, and things that have to do with the hands, sustaining the body, the universe with your own hands. Then if we move to the back of the mat, we have here what is called the 45 degree to the right and the 45 degree to the left. We continue with what is called the third line, and here we have what is called the fourth line. Then next to the middle line, between the third and the fourth line, we have the two parallel lines, which is a eight distance, eight inches differences between each other or separation between each other. And then we have what is called the X box. You can see the X, the X right here, or the red box. Then in front of it, we have what is called the purple circles and the orange triangles. Everything in the mat is symmetrically done to maintain proper alignment. So when you go into the poses, you have achievement of the perfect pose, or it can help you to really achieve the perfect pose in a very short amount of time, protecting your ligaments and your joints. The mats are usually anywhere between four to five millimeters thick, and the material is eco-friendly. And the reason for that is that whatever your skin touch, if it's alcohol, if it's petroleum, it will affect your nervous system. So we're trying to maintain a healthy, uh, uh, the use of a healthy mat to maintain the body in a healthy condition. So when you're practicing yoga. Understanding the subject where we're gonna practice yoga, now we go into the mat to learn what is called the basic four zone salutations. <laughs> So let's take a look at the four basic sun salutations. We're gonna start with the first sun salutation. When you go with the four sun salutations, make sure that the toes are always next to the first line, and then maintain the feet next to the parallel lines. This will give a visual to the practitioner, to the student, how to maintain the body symmetrically balanced from right to left, front and back. If the toes are in line, the movement of the legs and the hips will be balanced. The next step is you bring the hands into Namaste or prayer pose. In the moment that your hands are into Namaste, you are automatically opening the heart chakra. It's called the Rain 17. 
your emotional body. From here, inhale, bring your hands on the sides and also the palms touch over the head. Palms touch. And then hinging on the hips, exhale, hands on the sides, forward and down. You're welcome to bring the hands on the floor or behind the legs. You always have a choice. You don't have to bring the hands on the floor at all. You can also bring the hands behind the legs just in case you don't reach, that's perfectly fine. Here, as you can see, we have perfect alignment on the hips because the position of the toes are perfectly in line. If the toes were out of place, one hip will be higher than the other hip, but because the toes are perfectly in line, so you can follow the alignment, then the hips will be totally level, which allow a spinal fluid to go all the way down into the brain. Inhale into a flat back, variation of Uttanasana. Here in this pose, we try to maintain the spinal cord straight with the neck long. So we don't prevent the spinal fluid from going to the brain. We want the brain to receive a spinal fluid. So we are gazing to the toes, moving the shoulders back, lifting the tailbone, elongating the spinal cord, and separating the shoulders away from the ears toward the hips. This is called Uttanasana too. We also call it flat back. Exhale, Uttanasana with the hands flat or behind the legs. Here, you wanna press the hands on the floor. With time, when you start reaching, you're gonna be able to press the hands on the floor. In the meantime, let's say you don't reach, no big deal. You just simply bring the hands behind the legs and try to bring the upper body or the upper trunk closer to the thighs until they eventually connect. And try to keep the shoulders back and use the support of the legs to help you to bend the elbows back so the abdomen is closer to the thighs. Inhale, arms on the sides and up, palms over the head so they touch. Exhale into a namaste prayer pose. So this is how to do the first sun salutations from the front. Now we're gonna do exactly the same thing from the side so you can have a different visual and understand how to do it better. The shoulders should be right over the hips and the hips over the knees and ankles and the tailbone gentle tuck in. Now here, the eyes should be at the eye level. So you can see above and you can see below while you're in present time. Then you bring the hands into namaste or prayer pose. Inhale, bring the hands on the sides and up, arms over the head so they touch. Exhale, hinging on the hips forward and down into Uttanasana with the hands on the floor. Or you can bend the elbow behind, behind your legs. Hold it there and breathe. Inhale, flat back into a variation of Uttanasana. Exhale, hands flat or behind the legs. But here is where you have to pay a lot of attention. You wanna keep the seat bones right over the heels. Now take a look at the position. If we put a pendulum, we're gonna pendulum and we're gonna see if it is has perfect alignment. You can see here that she needs to move the seat bones a little bit forward until they are on top of the heels. One more inch forward, beautiful. Now, the seat bone is right over the heel, and that will create a nice stretching in the hamstring, and she feels like she's really stretching her body, which is a very good practice. Now, the next step, inhale, flat back into a variation with the neck long, and exhale, hands flat or behind the legs with the chest to the tights, beautiful. Inhale, bring the hands on the side and up, arms over the head so they touch all the way up, Exhale into a namaste or prayer position. Relax the shoulders and keep the neck longer. I hope that this information about how to do the first one salutation can help you to align the body so you don't overstand on your body when you're doing the Uttanasana or the first one salutation. Thank you. <laughs>
And that way, the left knee is over the heel, use your fingertips on the floor so you can look forward. And you're dropping the hip a little bit so the left, right leg is nice and straight. Then, you ground the hands and move the left foot back on top of the other right backs. So now her body is in line. So here, this is called the plank or santolanasana. This is where we measure the distance between the feet and the hands for a proper downward facing dog. That will be her downward facing dog. So these are the principles that we use to use the mat according to your body height. If you're small, you will need eight inches smaller than the large size. If you're medium, four inches smaller than the large size. In this case, she is large. So the distance between the feet and the hands is somewhere around 72 inches, the size of the mat. Go back into a plank. Now here we're going to plank, the tailbone tuck in. Now you're going to be shooting the heels to the back. This is called from the hips to the feet. This is called descending energy. Using descending energy, bring the knees on the floor, the chest and the chin, arching your back. So you start arching your back to release tension in the lumbar area. Without moving the knees, bring the, babe, the pelvis on the floor and bring the hands about two, three inches off the ground as you look forward with the toes pointing back. And then you ground the hands flat again, next to the first line, into a downward facing dog. Here, the toes are in line, and then you start creating one line between the hip, the shoulder, and the wrist. One nice, straight, beautiful line. So in that way, the spinal cord is nice and straight, and the shoulder roll out away from the ears. Then, if you use the fingertips to the floor properly, you start using the muscles behind the body that allow the heels to go to the ground because the muscles of the back are directly connected with the heels of the feet. Then the toes are in line next to the third line inside the red boxes with the heels to the floor. At the beginning of your practice, your heels will not touch the floor. No big deal. Your beginning is you're going to keep the heels up and as you release tension in your hamstring and in your calf and in your back, the heels with time start touching the floor. But of course, it requires commitment and discipline to develop this practice. This is called Adumukha Shwanasana or a downward facing dog. You breathe in here comfortable, using the 10 fingers and pressing the heels to the ground as you lift the seat bones. Now, move the right foot next to the right fingertips in front. Look forward. Make sure that the right knee is always over the heel. Don't let the knee move forward. In this case, don't do that because then you're collapsing on the hips, on the groin, and you're overstanding on the left groin. And then they're overstanding on the right knee. Keep the knee always on top of the heel. Use your fingertips, bring the right leg straight. Why do you want to use the right leg straight? Because the bone don't get tired, but the muscle does. So if you want to develop a healthy practice with long muscle that is not bulky, make sure that you always use the bone. So leg straight, so joint, joint, and joint are totally in one straight line. Use your fingertips stable to the floor, and as you exhale, left foot to the front. Uttanasana press. Exhale, exhale. Beautiful. Inhale, arms on the sides and up, arms over the head so they touch. Exhale into a namaste prayer pose. And then we do the left side. Let's take a look at the left side. Inhale, hands on the sides and up, arms touch. Exhale, hands forward down into Uttanasana press, hands on the floor or behind the legs. Inhale, flat back into a variation, neck is long. Exhale, hands flat or behind the legs. Beautiful. Move the left foot straight to the back, inside the red box. She already know visually where to place the foot. So if the left foot is in the right location, there is no risk of hurting the groin or collapsing on the back left knee or maybe finding the position much difficult. Let's say if she did not have these lines on the mat, her left foot will be all the way back, move the left foot back, and then she will be collapsing on the pelvic floor and that will be not good to give her support or she's only using the right heel but she's not using the ball of the foot. Or let's say, that she doesn't have the lights in the mat and then she doesn't move the left foot far enough with the left toes here. Now, 
She's not really stretching on the groin and in the hip on the iliopsoas on the left side because the feet is too close to each other. With this mat, she can place the left foot exactly where it's supposed to be according to her body height. And then the left leg is straight back and she's stretching perfectly and safely in her, in her own body. Move the right foot back into a plank, shooting the heels to the back. Use the 10 fingers as much as you can. And then bring the knees on the floor, the chest and the chin, and lifting the tailbone as you arch the back. Without moving the knees, baby cobra, bujangasana, at top of the feet on the ground with the toes pointing back. Exhale back to a downward facing dog. Beautiful. The toes are in line. The spinal cord is one straight line. We want the spinal cord to be straight. At the beginning of your practice, you might have like a bulky spine like this, round the back. That's very normal. But if you have the right alignment with time, this is gonna go lower, 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 until it disappears, so you release all the tension accumulated in the back from probably too much sitting. The spinal cord is straight. Inhale, move the left foot next to the left fingertips. Look forward. Left leg is straight. Use your fingertips on the floor. Exhale, right foot to the front. Uttanasana, exhale, 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 beautiful. Inhale, arms on the sides and up, arms over the head until they touch. Exhale into a namaste, prayer position. Excellent. So that will be the second sun salutation. I hope you have a good visual of it, and I hope it can help you to develop a he healthy practice. <laughs>I'm going to introduce you now to the third sun salutation. We have four sun salutations all together, and this is the third sun salutations, and how to go into a perfect Chaturanga Dandasana. Exhale, bring the hands into Namaste or prayer pose. Inhale, arms on the sides and up, arms over the head so they touch. Exhale, hands forward down into Uttanasana press with the hands on the floor or behind the legs. Inhale, flat back into a variation, neck is long. Exhale, hands flat or behind the legs. Beautiful. Move the right leg straight back inside the red backs. Again, make sure that the toes are inside the red backs. This is the right distance according to her body length. Ground the hands flat and move the left foot back into a plank. Shooting the heels to the back, tuck the tailbone in just a little bit to elongate the spine. And then you're going to bend the elbows 90 degree. Go back again. Again, you're going to bend the elbows 90 degrees forward, there, and tuck the tailbone in, there. Inhale, move the feet six inches back and roll up into an upward facing dog so the shoulders move back. Try to relax the glutes and move the hips forward and move the shoulders back. Move the hips forward and move the shoulders back. And then tuck the toes in into a downward facing dog, keeping the toes in line. Here, I lift the sit bones. Elongate the spine, roll the shoulders out, and relax your neck. Let the head hang from the shoulders and neck. The intelligence of the head knows what to do. And the spinal fluid will go straight to the brain. Every time you're doing these downward facing dogs, make sure you hold it for at least two, three breaths, so you can really feel the benefits of holding the pose and stretching the muscles that are connected through the spinal cord and the nervous system, so that can help you to release stress. Inhale, move the right foot next to the right fingertips. Look forward, use your fingertips on the floor. Notice how the right knee is on top of the heel. Left heel is straight back, and you're dropping the hips as you look to the front. Right leg is straight, so you use the bones. Don't use the muscle, try to use the bone. Exhale, left foot to the front. Uttanasana, beautiful. Inhale, arms on the sides and up, arms over the head, all the way up. Exhale into a namaste, prayer pose. Excellent. Now we do the left side. Inhale, arms on the sides and up, arms touch. Exhale, forward down into Uttanasana press, all the way down. Inhale, flat back into a variation, neck is long. Exhale, hands flat and press. Inhale, left foot straight back inside the red backs. Notice and observe how easy it becomes for you when you start using the mat how to place the foot right inside the red box, it becomes automatic in your mind. So you don't have to think about if you're placing the left foot in the right location or not, it's already going there. So you maintain proper distance between the left foot and the right foot.
so you don't overextend your joints. Ground the hands and move the right foot back into a plank. Tucking the tailbone in, you're going to bend the elbows only 90 degrees. Chaturanga a little bit lower. There. Try to move the elbows a little bit closer if you can to the front. Inhale, upward facing dog. Move the feet back six inches. Why is it important to move the feet back six inches? You might be asking yourself, right? Let's take a look what happens if she does not move the feet six inches back. Notice how the shoulders are over the wrist. You relax the glute so the spinal cord goes forward and the solar plex up. But if she did not move the feet six inches back, she will be overextending the joint on the wrist. Let's take a look. Go back again into plank. When you're into plank, without moving the feet, go into a chataranga. Don't move the feet. Upward facing dog. Notice how the shoulder is over than the wrist. That's no good. That's why we need to move the feet back. So move the feet back to maintain the shoulder over the wrist and keep the inner elbow facing each other and roll the shoulders back. Inhale, inhale, exhale back to a downward facing dog and bring the toes in line. What is it that we are looking for in downward facing dog? Perfect balance. But how can you maintain perfect balance? Proper alignment. And if you connect proper alignment, with the perfect balance between the right and the left, between the back and the front, between the back and the front, and between the front and the back on the right, in the front of the right, left side of the body. If everything is balanced, then you can achieve what is called the perfect pose. But in order to achieve the perfect pose, you need to have equal weight between the legs and between the arms, between the front of the body and between the back of the body. But in order to achieve this perfection, your position of the hands and the feet has to be at the right distance in order for you to achieve the perfect pose. If the feet is too far back, you will be hurting on your wrist. If the feet is too close to the hands, you will not be stretching from the hamstrings properly and all the way goes to the front of the body. So here, you will have the perfect alignment. Inhale, left foot next to the left fingertips. Look forward. Bring the left leg straight, exhale, right foot forward, Uttanasana, exhale, 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 beautiful. Inhale, arms on the sides and up, arms over the head so they touch. Exhale into a namaste or prayer pose, excellent. That was the Tersan salutation. I hope that you take a look and make sure that you practice safely for a lifetime. <laughs>
exhale into a namaste prayer pose. Let's take a look one more time. The jumping has to go into Chaturanga Dandasana. You do not jump into a plank. Why is it so important to do that? If you jump into plank, it's too much of the impact in your joint on the wrist, and that can affect you with time. So you wanna make sure that you use the ligaments and the joints as springs to support the whole entire body weight. If you jump too flat, then you can have a stronger impact on your joints. Inhale, arms on the sides and up, arms over the head. Exhale, hands forward down into, chata, into Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back into a variation. This is the preparation. Soundless, ground the hands and jump. Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing dog, inhale, move the shoulders back. Exhale, back into a downward facing dog with the toes in line. Beautiful. Again, Use the five fingertips of each hand that are connected to the five sensory organs. Means the eyes can see and the ears can hear, the nose can smell. And you want to use the tongue so you can taste, okay, the tongue to the palate. And at the same time, feel the body occupying a space as you move through space and time. Exhale, macro bend the knees, little bit, look forward. Inhale, jump between the fingertips, beautiful. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, arms on the sides and up, arms over the head. Exhale into a namaste prayer pose. Excellent. That was the fourth sun salutation. So this is the foundation for all the next levels that come into the sequence. I hope that you keep tuning in and we can continue working with you at your home or in your office and practice safely for a lifetime. <laughs>
will be pointing to the thumbs, creating one line between the wrists, the shoulders, and the hips. When you have the proper alignment because of the mat alignment and the distance is there, you will not be in pain thinking this is too much for you because the position is creating the perfect pose for you to hold it for a longer period of time. As you exhale, open the arms horizontal with the shoulders. You're gonna look at the left foot and you're gonna move the left heel two inches forward so the ankle remains on top of the middle line and then you're gonna start with the toe and the heel to the back behind the fourth line. Now notice that the left foot now is 90 degree to the left in relation to the middle line. Again, the left foot is 90 degree to the left in relation to the middle line. Now notice that the ankle, the knee, and the left hip are on top of the middle line. At the same time, the spinal cord is on top of the middle line to maintain the proper alignment and the shoulders will be over the hips. Again, notice how the right knee is on top of the heel, and now the hips are level with the shoulders over the hip bones. The weight of the body is pressing on the right heel, so you're using the muscles on the knee to the right leg to support the muscles in the front of the leg. And you tuck the tailbone in, you drop the tailbone towards the floor, and you breathe into the lower abdomen, also called the lower dantian. Here, the left hand is representing your past and the right hand is representing your future. And you are totally here in present time where the spinal cord is always in present time. Exhale right hand inside the heel and drop the left arm over the left ear. Here, you're creating one line between the ankle, the hip, the shoulder, and the wrist. Now you see this little gap right here? It's very easy to correct. You just move the left shoulder back, move the, the scapula back, and drop the left arm over the ear. Beautiful. Now, little by little, you start having a nice, beautiful straight line, and then little by little, you start twisting toward the left side by pressing the right thumb against the floor. This is called extended side angle pose. Inhale. Exhale, hands on the floor, either side the right heel. You're gonna bring the right hand outside the right foot and bring the thumb on top of the second line in both hands. Use your fingertips. Why do you need this space? Because you wanna bring the right leg straight. Once the right leg is straight and the right foot is flat, you're gonna move the left foot forward on top of the 45 degree line. Why do you need to move the 45 degree line foot? So the hips can be level. I need the hips to be level. Can I have that piece of wood, Claudine? The, the big one, the little one, the little one, yeah. The what? Yeah. So why the left foot has to move forward? So we can keep the hips level. When I say level, what does that mean? That the hips should be level in relation to the floor. And that's where the lines in the mat comes in. This is considered level in relation to the floor. So the spinal cord can be straight on top of the middle line. But if the left foot was not on a 45 degree line, let's take a look what happens to the, middle line, to the, to the hip bones. Move the left foot back at 90 degree. Let's say that your foot is like this. Let's give for example that your foot is like that and you do not understand alignment. Take a look what happened to the spinal cord. Now, she's collapsing on the right hip, she's lifting on the left hip, and the spinal cord is creating a curve that can affect your whole entire nervous system. And it will affect in the way you stretch, it will affect the way you feel. We don't want that, so we put this on the side, and we do it the right way. Move the left foot on top of the 45 degree line, move the right hip back, move the left hip forward, Maintain the principle of the middle line or the invisible line in connection with the spinal cord and then exhale forward down. You're welcome to move the hands forward and then try to accommodate the abdomen closer to the thigh. Here, this is called Parsvottanasana variation one. From there, interlace your fingers behind and up and away from the sacrum. As the hands go together, they go up, but the right hip goes up. Now, notice that she still maintains the same principle of the spinal cord. 
and the hips are level, so a spinal fluid can go easier into her brain. The next step is, Parsvottanasana 3, bend the right knee. Move the left heel two inches forward. Start with the toe and the heel behind the fourth line. Now she has the right distance, according to her body length, to bring the top of the head close to the floor inside the right shin ankle. And then little by little the hips will drop. It's perfectly okay if you're not able to reach all the way back yet. Let's say for example that the foot is here, a little bit closer to the, foot, the, to, the, to the second line, there, third line. That's perfectly fine. But at least you understand that your foot is supposed to be behind the fourth line. So at least you have the principle of the alignment of the middle line. With time, this will reduce. The foot goes back, and a couple months later, it goes all the way back until the hips drop so you can open more from the hips. Eventually, this left leg is straight behind the fourth line. The hips will drop, and the hands will move back, and you bend the right knee on top of the heel, a little bit more, Beautiful, a little bit more, one more inch, beautiful. And now you can really nicely open the hips safely. This is called Parsvottanasana Variation 3. Inhale, hands on the floor in front, right leg back. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Move the elbows a little bit forward, there. This is how you want to do the Chaturanga. Move the feet back six inch and roll up into an upper door, relax the gluteal muscles, move the hips back, forward, Exhale back into a downward facing dog. Toes are in line. Very good. So now let's take a look, a little bit more of the flow in the second level. Let's take a look at the flow on the left side. Move the left foot next to the left fingertips. Bring the right foot on top of the orange triangle and drop the right heel toward the middle line. Now, notice that the middle toe of the right foot is on top of the 45 degree line. Why? Because the feet, the foot, is controlling the brain. If the foot is not stable, the brain and the mind becomes uncomfortable. So make sure that the foot is flat, stable. The position of the joint is flexible at this point because of the position of the foot. Ground the feet. Inhale, bring the hands up into a warrior one. Beautiful. And you're breathing into the lower dantian, in and out of the body. You're breathing in and out of the body. Inhale. Exhale, open the arms horizontal with the shoulders, right heel two inches forward, and then toe heel behind the fourth line. Beautiful. Now, the middle line is directly connected with the arms, the hips, and the spinal cord. And the left knee is right over the heel, and the back leg is nice and straight. The arms are horizontal, and the facial muscles are soft, and you're processing information by breathing into the lower abdomen. As you exhale, left hand inside the heel and the right arm over the ear. Try to move the scapula all the way back to create nice space on the shoulder. Here, you want to keep the left wrist in line with the left, left heel, with the thumb pointing at 3 o'clock. There. The pinky finger along with the middle line and the thumb pointing at 3 o'clock. This position of the thumb will give you a lot of stability of twisting the body to the right. Your right hip drops, the right foot flat, the right leg is straight, and you spiral the thigh out, the calf out, the outer leg down, the inner ankle up, the right hip back, the left knee bent, the right arm is straight, and you twist to the right with the diaphragm. Exhale, hands either side, the left heel with the thumbs on top of the second line, left leg is straight. Notice, if you don't have the lines in the mat, you probably will, the like, spinal cord will be somewhere around like this. You will not be stable. But because we have the lines in the mat, in your mat, you just place your foot on top of the 45 degree line. Beautiful. Now, the hips can go level. A little bit higher with the left one, nice. Now, we have what is called perfect balance. If you have perfect balance, the possibility for you to open the body more efficiently in a shorter amount of time is greater and is preventing you from getting hurt. Interlace your fingers behind and up and away from the sacrum. Try to lift the arms. Look at the left foot. Make sure that the foot is stable, especially the left foot, the ball of the left foot. Let's say that it's very difficult to ground the left foot. You can keep the left toe up and ground the ball of the left foot. There, 
bend the left knee 90 degree, right heel two inches forward, and the toe heel behind the fourth line. Beautiful. Now press your feet. Activate the right leg by pressing the outer right foot, and now lift the hands and try to bend the left knee. So the left knee is on top of the right heel, and you're breathing to the nose. You're relaxing your neck, and little by little, you're opening nice and safely from the hips. Because your right foot is not too far back, you get in the right distance. Or because the right foot is not too close, you get in the right distance, so you can open the body safely. Inhale, hands on the floor in front. Left foot straight back. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog with the shoulders back. Beautiful. Exhale, back into a downward facing dog. Excellent. Here, we're going to use the second line and take a look how easy it's going to be for you to do the Bakasana. The Bakasana was the pose that you always wanted to do, but you didn't know how to place your feet behind the hands. Here, it's very easy. Let's take a look. Exhale, macro bend the knees, look forward. Place the toes behind each wrist on top of the second line. Beautiful, hold it there. Macro bend the knees, so about five, seven, eight inches. And then here, keep the fingertips next to the first line, and notice the distance between the toes to the wrist, about six to eight inches. It's very important to have that distance here, so you can macro bend the elbows in Chaturanga way, and then you lean forward but keep the knee on top of the armpit as you look to the front, and then the toes off the floor. This is called Bakasana Crow. And you hold it for about five breaths. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, jump into a vinyasa. Beautiful. Upward facing dog. And back to a downward facing dog. And bring the toes in line. Keep the legs straight. Press the hands flat. Elongate the spine. Breathe through the nose. Facial muscles are soft. And connect to your breath. Breathe. Connect to your breath. Elongating the spine. Creating one line between the wrist the shoulder and the hips. Moving the shoulders away from the ears and pressing the heels to the ground. This is called Adho Mukha Svanasana or a downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, back, macro bend the knees, look forward. Inhale, jump between the hands. Exhale, Uttanasana press. Inhale, arms up, palms over the head. Exhale, Namaste, prayer pose. Excellent. Mm -hmm.